Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's day one coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23. There are thousands of people in the room here with me, Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had a great, exciting day one of our two days of coverage. We're going to be talking about connecting the dots on Charlotte AI monetization. Tell us a little bit about Charlotte AI. It was just announced at Black Hat last month. What are some of the things that that excited you about it, and what were you expecting to hear today? Okay, so, yes, they, uh, CrowdStrike announced Charlotte AI uh, last August, this past August, at Black Hat. It was demoing it. We saw the demo on stage today, and there's another demo here. I haven't checked it out. I got to go check it out, because George Kurtz challenged me. I said, you know, how, how real is that? He goes, we got to go check it out. Now, of course, it was a, a, a text-to-voice translation that they did just to make impact and they had the, like the Star Trek, yeah. you know, speaking bl blob, yeah. whatever that yep. was. That was kind of cool. It was. Um, and I think they structured it in a way that looked really slick, which it was. But here's the thing, they had said then, and they said on the earnings call, and they said at the Goldman Sachs Communicopia conference that they were going to divulge what pricing would look like here at the show. So George Kurtz in his uh, keynote today, when he got to pricing, said <laughs> call for pricing basically. Yep. Contact your local sales rep. So I was like, wow, what a buzzkill. That was a jip. So we have to sort of infer what's going to happen here. So we're calling this, you know, connecting the dots on, on, on Charlotte AI monetization and pricing. So I think here's what's going to happen. So CrowdStrike prices by endpoint. I think on average pricing is going to be, I don't know, eight, nine dollars per endpoint. Hundred, hundred eight dollars per year, something like that. Which actually can add up. CrowdStrike's a value play, so it's going to be more expensive than, than other platforms that are just point products, because you get a lot more in, in the platform. So I think they're going to make it really easy to get in. They're going to probably add on to that endpoint pricing. I don't know, a couple more bucks a month per user. I think it's, it's got to be a very low cost to get people in. And then I think it's going to be either, I think it's definitely got to be some kind of consumption model because using LLMs and resources on, around, we know this from the Cube AI, it's expensive. You're yeah. using cloud resources. They're going to have to pay AWS. They're going to have to pay subscription costs for, to the LLM vendor. And George Kurtz said we're using all the LLM, so who are they using? I'm sure they're using a bunch of you know, AWS, they're using probably OpenAI, Llama 2, Co Cohere, uh, uh, AI21 Labs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All those, and, and plus the open source ones, I'm sure they're testing them all. And they're going to market with some combination. So those are expensive to use. Yeah and they use a lot of cloud resources. They use a lot of compute. You know, maybe, maybe they're using some GPUs or some expensive compute resources. So they got to charge for that usage, or they at least have to cap it. So my guess is what they'll do is say, all right, you can buy them in maybe chunks, maybe T-shirt sizes, kind of like Snowflake prices. If you think about yep. Snowflake pricing, they have sort of the same pricing challenge that you know, they, they want to make a margin. Yep. They have to have a certain gross margin. If the customer uses more than they than they contracted for, they've got to charge them for that. So I suspect they're going to say, okay, very low entry price to add on to your whatever it is, eight bucks per user or nine bucks per endpoint per month. Not per user, per endpoint. And then you can buy some amount of credits, if you will, that you can burn against queries. And then the complexity of the query is going to use more resources. Okay. If you go over, then you got to pay more, or maybe they alert you, or maybe it shuts it down. I'm sure you can govern it in some way, shape, or form. But that's what I, how I think they're going to go to market. And we'll find out tomorrow, but you know, this is a, a, it's kind of an analysis exclusive, if you will, where we're trying to connect the dots and give you sort of preview of what we're learning here just by talking to people, talking to customers. And I think that at the end of the day, they're going to use this as a learning experience, number one, and then turn it into monetization. They're going to talk to the Wall Street analysts tomorrow. I, I don't expect they're going to give guidance on how much revenue they're going to generate from, 
from Charlotte AI, no way. Okay. Not until it becomes a meaningful portion of their revenue that they can actually predictively measure. Right. But that's what the analysts want to know, Lisa. They want to know, when is, a, this is what they're asking Microsoft, they're asking Amazon, when is Gen AI going to actually gen revenue right. for you? Right. And I think the answer is stay tuned. Stay tuned. So, we're going to, did, did you get any little nuggets from George Kurtz when he was on earlier today? But we, although you said, we know we're going to find out pricing tomorrow. Yeah, well, I think he's, he basically sort of implied that they're using all these, they're experimenting and have experimented with all these different LLMs. Um, he said, you know who they, they are. And so, and I think that, I don't think there's going to be any like radical um, unveiling. Although, he did say tomorrow, there's more uh, LLM news, more Gen AI news. Okay. I asked them about, you know they do low code uh, foundry, low code, no code foundry, so you can develop your own workflows. Yep. I said, you ever going to do yes code? And he said, well, stay tuned for tomorrow. So maybe they're, maybe they're going to announce a developer platform, I don't know. That was a good little nugget, so we'll, Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned, keep it right here on theCUBE. Of course, Dave and I are going to be live all day tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. Pacific. We're going to bring you the keynote analysis at 10 a.m. Hopefully, we'll see how close Dave's predictions come to reality. But knowing him as I do, it's probably pretty spot on. Dave, it's been great hosting hey, with thanks, you. thanks Lisa. Day one, looking forward to day two. Yeah, ditto. All right, thanks guys for watching theCUBE's day one coverage of CrowdStrike Falcon 23. Dave and I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific for day two. Have a good night.